So some of the big news in professional wrestling this week from a WWE standpoint is apparently the reports that Jack Swagger has requested his release from WWE. I don't think this is shocking. Frankly, I don't think this is surprising. This is a guy that recently has not been utilized much on TV. He's been with the company, I think, about a decade now. Actually, more than a decade when he counted his time in developmental. Probably at a point in time in life where he feel like he feels like WWE has given him this or given him that. But his time in WWE has run its course. And it's time for a change, a new direction, a new path. I get it. I understand it. You could also kind of say, who cares? But that's kind of where you got to the point with Jack Swagger leaving WWE. Now, what I've always found interesting about Jack Swagger, and that's usually uh, words that you don't hear associated with each other, uh, interesting in Jack Swagger. But here is what I did always find interesting about Jack Swagger. Is you're talking about it from a look standpoint and a background standpoint, he had a lot going for him. There is an understandable interest there back in the day from WWE in a guy like him. You're talking about a guy, you know, like six foot six, 265, 270 pounds. So he passed the eyeball test from a physique standpoint, from a size standpoint, especially in today's WWE. He looks like a freaking super god in terms of his actual physique and his height and his weight and his muscle tone and everything. But then he also had the all-American amateur wrestling background from his time at Oklahoma. You know, you could see some of the appeal there similar to the type of appeal that there once was for WWE in a Brock Lesnar and they still now have today. You know, I'm not comparing Jack Swagger to Brock Lesnar as a talent, but what I am saying is there are similarities there in terms of having that size, having that look, and having those all-American amateur wrestling credentials behind him. And when you look at a guy like that, that can be very appealing because at the end of the day, you would assume that that amateur background would be helpful in terms of being able to figure out the world of working inside of a professional wrestling ring and working professional wrestling type of matches, like it helped guys like Kurt Angle and Shelton Benjamin and, you know, Again, a guy like Brock Lesnar and so many other guys throughout the years, the Danny Hodges, the Briscoe brothers, so on and so forth. And you look at a guy like this and you say, man, that should really help him. And then he's got main event size. He passes the eyeball test with the legit credentials to back him up. My God, he could potentially appeal to a lot of different demographics of the WWE fan base. And in theory, that philosophy, that thought process makes some sense. But unfortunately, with Jacob Hager, Jack Swagger, the, there are several problems with this philosophy. Number one is he looked goofy with his fucking stupid gorilla arms. Number two, he had absolutely no discernible personality at all. Sometimes dudes have it factor, have charisma, have personality. And in professional wrestling, it is going to be very obvious to see those guys that do and those guys that don't. Same thing with the people on YouTube that talk about wrestling. Sometimes it's easy to see those cats with personality, charisma, summit factor, and those that don't have it. Although sometimes their viewership numbers don't necessarily reflect that reality. He also had an incredibly stupid sounding lisp where it frankly literally made it hard to understand what the fuck this dude was talking about. And not in an epic, cool, mindfuck type of ultimate warrior type of way but in a Jack Swagger, Sylvester the Cat fucking type of way. And on top of that, he had little to no, and I emphasize more the word no, microphone abilities whatsoever. So no personality, no mic abilities, and then that amateur background to be never really frankly translated to the world of professional wrestling. I don't think he ever looked at him as being a great worker or even a great in-ring performer or a great professional wrestler. Like, he just, it never clicked for him. He never fully got it. And I know what's oftentimes popular or cool or in vogue to automatically blame a wrestling company, or in this case, especially the WWE, for why a guy doesn't succeed when, in theory, he should. It's the easy crutch that a lot of fans have to hold on to because a lot of times it is 
the appropriate philosophy to have. It's the right way to look at things. The WWE screws up almost everything they fucking touch now. So you can blame them for a lot of things. But they gave Jack Swagger plenty of chances. When they had that crappy ECW brand, they named him the ECW champion. I think about 2010, and I'll never forget the Raw. I was watching with Tony and Mikey, and we're sitting there. And there's this random Money in the Bank qualifying match for WrestleMania 26. It's Jack Swagger against, I can't remember who the fuck it was. MVP's on commentary. You've got other people that are going to be in this Money in the Bank match, like Christian and Shelton Benjamin and Kofi Kingston. You know, other guys, uh, even Dolph Ziggler, that all at that time seemed like much more appealing options. But Jack Swagger wins his qualifying match. Even the way he was presented within that match, it seemed like MVP was a bigger fucking deal. It's like, why the hell is Jack Swagger in this? But Tony and I remember kind of looking at each other, and we're almost like, it seems so odd and so random. They can't possibly be thinking about having this fucker win money in the bank, can they? They realize he's not ready, don't they? They realize he sucks, don't they? But then we get to WrestleMania 26. And of course, with the other more viable, credible options that they had, they decide to give Jack Swagger this spot. They decide to have Jack Swagger be the Money in the Bank winner. And I hope as Jack Swagger awkwardly climbed up that ladder and what seemed like an eternity because it fucking was, it was at least, if I remember correctly, a minute and a half or two minutes as the camera just sits there in all types of odd fucking angles looking up at this dumb dick with gorilla arms who can't fucking unhook the money in the bank briefcase from the simple goddamn hook. I hope the reality smacked everybody in the face backstage and in the gorilla position and frankly split their uprights and kicked them right in the fucking crotch with how stupid this fucking was. But ultimately, they gave him the opportunity. Now, of course, instantly, they had done it. They probably immediately realized the error of their fucking ways because there was no real planning to this. They had not built this guy up at all before he actually won Money in the Bank. We're not dealing with the WWE philosophy of having the guy win Money in the Bank and then crap on him until he cashes in. They crapped on him before he even won the damn thing, before he even fucking cashed in. But ultimately, they did go with it. Then immediately did have him cash in. They're like, when in doubt, heal him out. Let's put a damn suit on him. And of course, that didn't fucking work either. But he still cashed in. He still was a world heavyweight champion. Yes, that actually fucking happened. Even though the WWE sabotaged it and got over it very fucking quickly, and you can tell instantly regretted the decision that they made, they still made it. They still gave the guy the opportunity, and he could have made something out of it. But Jack Swagger sucks because he sucks, and of course he fucking didn't. Later on down the road, he made a crappy United States champion. Again, he was given an opportunity, and he didn't do shit with it. But then you look at 2013. He comes back in 2013, early on in the year, and they're giving him a rocket ship push. They align him with Zeb Coulter, and they're doing this kind of tea party spoof. We the people! And it's a, it's a gimmick. For, like, for the first real time, Jack Swagger has a gimmick. He has a hook. He has something to latch onto. He's got a heater in Zeb Coulter. He's working heel now. So for all the people that realize he fucking sucks, now you got a chance to naturally boo him and it fits and it makes sense. He's got something that makes you even want to hate him more with this fucking gimmick and all this other crap. You've got Glenn Beck bitching about how they're spoofing on the tea party. Of course they are. But not in the negative way you want to think like the WWE and the people in charge of the company like Vince and so on actually liked what Zeb Coulter was saying at the goddamn time. But here is opportunity being served upon a silver platter. You've got all this anti-immigrant crap via this gimmick that you have with Zeb Coulter. You've got your natural built-in heater. You're going after babyface Alberto Del Rio. You've got yourself after Elimination Chamber. You've got yourself a title shot at WrestleMania 29. So, of course, Jack Swagger goes after a SmackDown taping in February and gets himself fucking arrested for driving under the influence. Oh, and by the way, drug possession. If he could really encapsulate... Jack Swagger's career. It's blown opportunities. And this was the moment in time where the WWE, it almost seemed like, was starting to figure it out with the dude. Like, things were lined up so perfectly. If he was ever going to actually, actually get over, and he was actually ever going to become a main eventer, this was the time. You had the heater. You had the gimmick. The opponent was right. So many things were right about it. And Jack Swagger fucked it up. And then, of course, he fucking loses the match because the WWE had to punish him. And even sticking him with Cesaro and having them do their thing for a while. 
at the end of the day, they couldn't overcome the fact that Jack Swagger was a fucking moron and Jack Swagger fucking sucked. Let me rephrase that. Jacob Hager was a fucking moron and Jack Swagger, the character and performer, fucking sucked. And I think what we ultimately realize is that, you know, he just sucked. I never understood what people liked about this fucking dude. Yes, I guess so many people think that because he's big and he has main event size in the old sense that I'm automatically supposed to like him. But as I've talked about before, that's a fucking dumb way to look at the way I look at professional wrestling because that's just not factually accurate. But on top of that, you know, all American background as an amateur wrestler, who gives a shit? That doesn't always translate to being a great professional wrestler. In his case, it most certainly fucking didn't. And to me, Jack Swagger, Jacob Hager, and getting his opportunity, getting his pushes, getting his spot, was nothing more than a favor for Jim Ross at the end of his time in WWE. That's all it ever clearly fucking was to me. He was an Oklahoma boy. He was Boomer Sooner. He was all of this. So JR is going to push him and advocate for him big time. So was Briscoe. And look what that fucking got gotcha. you. Even legends and Hall of Famers like Jim Ross and Gerald Briscoe with great minds for the business can fucking be just ass wrong sometimes. And in this particular case, especially in the case of JR, clearly fucking ass wrong. And I think what else this proves, and this is an important point to make, is that it is always easy to blame WWE and their creative approach, their creative philosophy, uh, their creative results. And how it's really, really hard for guys to overcome and persevere and survive and even thrive in that environment of WWE and the cesspool of suck that is the WWE creative process because it is. It's a very valid point. It's a crutch we use as hardcore and internet and wrestling fans, uh, but it's a valid crutch because, frankly, in recent years, almost everything that WWE touches, they fuck up. They screw up really, really bad. So it becomes very easy to blame the machine for not outputting a better product because a lot of times it is the fault of the machine. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes guys are given opportunities and they screw up. They just don't have what it takes and sometimes they just fucking suck. And I'm sorry, at the end of the day, even if the pushes at times were inconsistent, even at times they got on him to get back off of him, at the end of the day, they gave Swagger opportunities and he screwed the fucking pooch. And at the end of the day, he just wasn't that dude. He fucking sucked. And in my opinion, if he's too fucking stupid to realize what he was being given and too talentless and too clueless to be able to capitalize on the opportunities that he was given, then fuck him. Give those opportunities to somebody else. So at the end of the day, while I understand why a guy like Jack Swagger would be frustrated and he would want to leave, my thoughts are good fucking riddance, buddy. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Because the company isn't missing shit. And us as wrestling fans aren't missing shit. Maybe you could fool or con TNA or an ROH or a New Japan or somebody into giving you way too much money to do jack shit. But at the end of the day, Jack Swagger always fucking sucked. He still fucking sucks. And he continues to fucking suck. And all he was was a bit of a burden on the WWE expenses. And he took up a spot that somebody with some actual fucking discernible talent could have actually done something with. After all these years. Thank God this dipshit is leaving WWE. Who needs him?